Hello everyone, and welcome to YouTube! Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Kaoru Hare, and I usually stream on Twitch. Um, I'm a variety streamer on Twitch, but this is gonna be my first YouTube video. I just decided that, you know, I, I play like very specific sorts of games on Twitch, and maybe I'll want to play them here on YouTube as well, but this game, Best Friends Forever, I think it's kind of like a dating sim. And I don't play dating sims on Twitch. I think dating sims are more like my guilty pleasure. And so we're going to do that today and we're going to see what happens. Just to do something a little different for the days when I'm too tired to actually stream. But I still want to play video games. So we're just going to try it new and I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's see. Good morning, Rainbow Bay. Oh. This is Hello? Rise and Shine with Shocky and I did, Jockey. uh... I'm your host, Shocky. God. I, I did debate whether or not to leave the voice acting on, or whether to turn it off and do the voice acting myself. I've decided to leave it on just for the fun of it. I think there are plenty of dating sims that don't actually do a voice acting. Um, and I'll speak for those, but I do, uh... Hopefully this works out and I don't turn it off halfway through the game, but we'll see. And I'm Jockey. What up, fam? What up, fam? I could have did it. It would have been fine. Boy, do we have a show <laughs> oh, for God. you this morning. First mm -hmm. up, why aren't you as happy as this couple? Oh, man. What a question. So this is Rainbow Bay. I can't believe I'm finally here. It's even prettier than the flyers made it look. Oh, I should take a photo while the sun's still rising. Nice. Nice. Hmm? Huh. You know, that island kind of looks like... A dog. Isn't it amazing what sorts of things can bring people I together? I thought it looked like a butt. What a story. But I kind of see the dog now. You know? It... it mm-hmm. And you could live that fantasy, too, with Rainbow Bay's hottest dating app, Woofer. Woofer? That's a good name for a dating app. I would- I would definitely- no, I wouldn't. I don't use dating apps. Are- are you dating the person or the dog? That's what I want to know. Because I- I'll definitely go on a date with someone's dog. Let's do that. Woofer? I hardly know her. <laughs> no. <laughs> Too right, Chucky. <laughs> what is that laugh? I guess radio hosts are just as bad no matter what city you're in. But really. Romance could be just a wolf away. Nope. If you're looking for a little... <laughs> then woofer may be right for you. <laughs> I guess it's a good way to meet people. It can't hurt. Go on. Whoa, back off, disembodied radio presenter. <laughs> I hope you're making a profile right now, but let's put on a little bit of our latest hit, You're My Best Friend, to get you in the mood. Then we'll be back talking with Rainbow Bay's own foxiest lady. First note, they did not read the script directly. He forgot to say in the meantime, just wanted to throw that out there. These radio hosts are weirdly pushy. I'm not moving all this way to miss out on another chance to make friends, though. Okay, Rainbow Bay, I'm single and ready to wolf. <laughs> okay. Woofer! People who love dogs who love people who love dogs. Select a profile picture. Uh, okay, let's see. Ooh, cute, undercut. Uh, no, no, no. Oh. Let's go, let's go with the undercut. If I'm only getting the three choices, I think the undercut's better. First name. Uh, I don't want to be myself. Let's do, uh, Melissa. Oh, tab doesn't work here. Alan. Pronouns. Hmm. Uh, star sign. Oh god. Uh, we'll just do Aquarius. Blood type. I think the Japanese have a. Uh, they do blood type. Astrology is what I want to say, but that doesn't really make sense. They do like a a blood type thing. Let's just go O, oh, and then I'll either die or be widely available. Which of these suggestively named cocktails would you be least wi willing to order at a bar? Slow, comfortable, screw against the wall. Sex on the beach. Slippery nipple. Ass. Can you imagine going up to a bartender and being like, Hey, can I get a little bit of that ass today? That's, I guess that's not what you would say. Be like, hey, yes, I'd like one ass, please. 
Anyway, slippery nipple, because I once heard a story. Which of these commonly searched phrases are most likely to be in your browser history? Why is an 11 pronounced once you won? Can I hire two private eyes to follow each other? Are babies dishwasher safe? How do you use the internet? Uh, let's go with once you won, uh, because linguistics is fun. In 300 years time, dogs will most likely have ascended to godhood, replaced cars, no, their own TV network, overthrown the capitalist regime. I think their own TV network. How do you feel about being mugged? Not great, really. Maybe with the right person. Any day, any time. I prefer soft robbing. I think the soft robbing is funny, but I'm just gonna go not great, really. Which of these upsetting flavor combinations do you most relate to? Pickles and <laughs> peanut butter? Banana, mayonnaise, and jello? Orange juice and toothpaste? Or ice Irish cream and vinegar? Let's go pickles and peanut butter. When confronted with a human baby, how are you most likely to respond? Scream and run? Steal it and use its hair to sustain yourself. Gently put it down and slowly walk away, or absorb its form. Uh, gently put it down and slowly walk away. Are you available for babysitting from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the weekends? Why? Because that was my first thought. What are you most looking for in a partner? Tax benefits? The capacity to raise offspring? A reliable blood and or organ donor or free therapy? Let's go tax benefits. So which of these scatting transliterations most upsets you? Dot! Dot ba dot dot da do da za ba ba da ba do za wee woo ba do ya do ya do bop bibbidi bidi 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 boo 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 I don't like the wee woo the wee woo at the end it sounds like an ambulance a way ambulance an ambulance I've been told I pronounce ambulance weird I'm sorry what makes you feel more relaxed than even death itself knowing the destruction of the universe is inevitable comparing yourself to your ex. Streaming videos of dogs dressed like people? ASMR tracks of being treated for the plague. Okay, uh... More relaxed? Let's, yeah, uh, knowing the destruction of the universe is inedible. Inedible. We've got some matches for you. Astrid23 shares your interest in the occult, which I didn't realize I was interested in, but it's good to know. Felix22 shares your interest in true crime broadcast. True God. In true crime podcast, Sacha27 shares her interest in activism. Anders36 shares her interest in cooking. Robin30 shares her interest in esports. And Maribel25 shares her interest in Pomeranians. Man. Uh. Should we go with the occult girl? I didn't know I was interested in the occult, but maybe I am. I'm not. I, I think I would either go with. Robin, Sacha, or Astrid. But I'm feeling like I need some lady love. And Sacha... Mm. Actually, I think Sacha is my type. Let's go with Sacha. Let's... Wow, thanks. Oh, do I not get to choose? Never mind. I take it all back. I, I am interested in everyone and all of the above. Oh no, they're still yeah. going. And speaking of bangers, we've got Miss Tech. Fox Ainsworth, here and ready to discuss anything other than my real name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, all right. Fox is Rainbow Bay's very own wildlife expert, exotic animal purveyor, and radio host interrupter. And bird law aficionado. Bird law. As a resident animal lover, Fox, what do you make of a dating app for dog owners. Makes sense, doesn't it? Rainbow Bay has been named the world's most dog-friendly town by Paws Abroad magazine every year since 2016. We also have the highest dog-to-human ratio, with almost every adult owning at least one dog. Really? Interesting. With so much of the city being dog-friendly, you must know some hot spots for young lovers to bring their cuddly companions. Try just about anywhere. South Shore is the largest off-leash beach you'll find, so a great place to play together in the sand. There's lots of talk about Femur Island lately though. Some say if you camp there with a poor pal who truly trusts you, the spirit of the world's best the dog will appear before The spirit of the world's you. best dog! Oh my god, that's adorable! Wow. I wonder what happens when you stay there with a soulmate. Hubba hubba. Probably nothing. But as I was saying, Rainbow Bay has a high volume of dog owners, but also plenty of young singles. 
This reminds me, I should really get a dog before I start trying to meet people on Woofer. True. Whoa, I don't know about that, Fox. I've been trying to find a date for years and found nothing. I'm not sure that's a fault of the dating pool, Jockey. Rainbow Bay was voted last year's number one singles mingling spot by Doki Doki Quarterly. Doki Doki? I would have pronounced that Doki Doki. I don't know if, what that says about me. For all we know, there's a bright-eyed soul searcher sitting on a bus on their way to Rainbow Bay as we <gasps> speak. Weird. Am I? Am I being punked? She's right, Jockey. You're single because you're wholly unlikable. Uh oh, feels bad, man. <laughs> Wait, what? Well, that's all the time we have with Fox this morning. Coming up next, play to win a double date with Jockey and I. Okay, folks. Thank you for riding with us today. We've arrived in Rainbow Bay's Arts District and we'll be unloading your bags any moment now. Well, this is me. Here goes nothing. Rainbow Bay, please be kind to me. New life, new apartment. I was per... I was pretty too lucky to find this place online. I hope it lives up to the pictures. Let's see, apartment 204 should be... here? Um, there's someone trying to slip something under my door. Is that a subpoena? Not again. Can I help you? Oh man, it's the... it's Sacha! Guys, it's Sacha! Man, maybe we should... we should have picked Sacha. Wait. Is this game listening to me? Hmm. Anyway. Can I help you? Oh. Oh, hey. I don't like that he said one word of his dialogue. Maybe I do need to turn the voice acting off. As he stands up, I realize he's holding a stack of papers in one hand, and there's a brindle pattern Italian greyhound curled up and wearing a turtleneck in the other. Italian greyhounds are, are kind of cre <laughs> kind of cute, kind of weird. Is this your apartment? Sorry, didn't mean to seem like a creep shoving things under your door. My name's Sasha. The little guy is Sasha. Marshmallow. It's Sasha. The little guy is Marshmallow. I saw the movers bringing boxes in yesterday, so I just assumed someone was in there now, but no one answered my knocks. Oh, I guess they got here before me. I just got in from New York. I'm Melissa. Um, she gave the movers the key to her new apartment? New York, huh? I lived there for a couple of months. You didn't happen to frequent Superior... Superior Vina Java. Adrenaline shot espresso milkshake. I usually just went to the milk bar in the office lobby. I don't even know what a milk bar is, so I'm just gonna say I go to the cafe. Of course- oh, I just- yep. <laughs> I don't- I don't- I don't like the mumbled- the mumbled replies. My favorite's the mainline- mainline surprise. That's a little strong for me. I like my coffee like I like my romance. Weak? Mostly sugar and covered in whipped cream? I- both- both valid answers. Exactly! So what brings you to Rainbow Bay? Oh, uh, you know, new life, new career, leaving my old marketing job behind. I hated that- no. No! Just no. <laughs> A former corporate grunt seeking new life in a seaside town. Well, I'm glad to be the first person to welcome you to Rainbow Bay. Sasha winks, pulls out a sheet of paper from the stack in his hands, and thrusts it forward. You're gonna want this if you're new to town. Pups for the people! The Pot of Gold Youth Association. I take the paper from his hands and look it over. It's a flyer for a dog adoption drive tomorrow morning at a local vet clinic. The Paw Prince Pet Care Center in collaboration with the Pot of Gold Youth Association. I work with a group for underprivileged and queer youths in the Bay. Every dollar you spend on adopting a dog helps us set up an, L an LGBT dor dorm, is what I was saying. Helps us set up a community dorm. Everything about this town so far is bizarrely serendipitous. Aren't you just the best little marshmallow in town? Just about everyone around here has a pupper. Isn't that right, Marshmallow? Sasha lifts Marshmallow to his face, scratching behind his ears and scrunching up his nose as the dog looks at it affectionately. Aw, uh -huh, so cute. Sasha looks up again, trying to wipe his face inconspicuously It'll and grins. It'll be super fun. Tell me you're going to be there. Trust me, you might just find your four-legged forever friend. I'm here to get a new leash on life. I'm not really a morning person. Yeah, let's go. New leash on life. <laughs> oh. Leash? Huh, get it? <gasps> leash, yeah, oh god, puns. A new leash on life. Um, I love it. 
I hate this. His laugh is terrible. We can't love him. Feels bad. You really uh, dug that one, huh? Dug! Because dogs, they dig! I can't breathe! Are you okay? Should I put a pause on the jokes? Please, this is too much. I think I'll just let him laugh it out for a while. Sasha leans one hand against a wall, wiping tears of laughter from his eyes with the other. I don't think Marshmallow got the joke, though. The Icky is looking around frantically, eyes wide with concern. His tail is wagging rapidly, beating against Sasha's lower torso. I is he okay? Okay, okay, I'm breathing, it's fine. I think Marshmallow got a little worried there. Aw, I'm sorry, little guy. Sasha nuggles Marshmallow's head with his nose gently, then straightens his back and grins Catch at you me. later. Well, it was nice meeting you. I live upstairs, so I guess we'll be neighbors. I hope to see you later. Yeah, see you around. And just like that, Sasha trots away with Marshmallow happily resting in his arms. Okay, behind that door lives my new home. No ghosts, no memories, just new beginnings. I hope it's everything I imagined. Hmm. It could be worse. I poke around the apartment, checking all my boxes have arrived. The place is small and a little worse for wear, but cute in its own way, I guess. As I move from the kitchen to the living room and then my bedroom, I realize I'm going to have to decide how to arrange all my furniture, as you do whenever you move into a new place. There's no one else to tell me I can't push all my furniture together to make a sofa island anymore. I smile to myself just a little and slice open the first box of kitchen supplies with my door key. It's unpacking time. I just got really uncomfortable about how I'm over here and she's over there and we're like two halves of a whole idiot. Many, no, hang on. <clears throat> many, many hours later. In my final hour, the sun has but disappeared. I lie alone in the cardboard grave I've made for myself. When they eventually find my body, they'll discover only my bones, clutching a pair of keys in one hand and covered in empty cheese single wrappers. The investigators will look around, baffled. What happened here? Why did this person own so many different Tupperware containers? And why did none of them have lids? They'll find my collection of novelty mugs. Wow, they'll think. Melissa was so well-traveled. Look at these cities they bought mugs in. But they are fools. I bought them all online. They'll find my passport expired and used only once. They'll never discover what happened here. Not until it's too late. The boxes will consume them. Three more lives will be lost to the cardboard oppression. Nobody will cry for me. They'll stand over my headstone and wonder, did Melissa ever even drink from those mugs? No. No, I did not. I should probably just go to bed. Why unpack today when I can unpack certain items only when I desperately need them to survive, right? Good night, Rainbow Bay. What? Who's there? Huh? Who are you? What do you want? Get out of my house! Oh. In my panic, I threw my phone across the room, along with about seven t-shirts I've been using for warmth. I could just let it keep going until the battery dies. I wonder how long that would take. Wait a minute. It's dog adoption day! One panicked a Uber ride later. Oh geez, there's a lot of people here. I should have gotten up earlier. Okay, everyone, we have a lot of dogs available, but there are more people here than there are dogs, so we need you to form an orderly line, calmly and quick. Before she can finish, everyone in the crowd comes alive and bolts toward the reception desk in hopes of being the first to pick. Oh, uh, I need to get in line. I frantically throw myself forward into the crowd. I've definitely been in less energetic mosh pits. Hey, hey, hey! No cutting! It's a battle royale here, and I will not be the first to die. Shove it, strangers. Eventually, the situation cools down, and despite a lengthy argument with the suited man who thought he could cut in front of me, I find my place in the middle of the line. I can see the vet standing behind the reception desk. Her face has stayed a constant visage of... Visage? Visage. What I can only call doneness throughout this whole ordeal. Hmm. My assistant Quincy will take your details get the, at the desk, and then you'll be invited into the exam room to pick from our available dogs. Him. Quincy. I said my assistant, Quincy. 
At that moment, the door on the far wall cracks open and a sheepish looking man sticks his head out. <laughs> hey. Hi, everyone. He sidles through the partially open doorway, pulling the door shut closely behind him. As he does, he gives one quick final glance into the room beyond, then turns and grins at the vet. Hey, Jade, just, uh, we might have a problem with the old cheese ball. That Sheba will be the death of me. All right, I'll corral the troublemaker. You start getting people's aye, details aye, down. Captain. Quincy takes over behind the desk, clicks his pen a few times, and looks up with an astoundingly bright smile. All right, who's up first? Ready to meet your best friend forever? Just a waiting game now. Okay, new dog owner number 24. That's me. <laughs> hey. Hey, you're an unfamiliar face. Always nice to make some new friends. Welcome to Paw Prints. Thanks. I had no idea this dog adoption was going to be so busy. It's like Graveyard of the Teenage Bug Woman in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like that scene where all the zombies were chasing after the bug woman? Get back, you non-insect flesh eaters! You'll never take me undead! In hindsight, that movie's dialogue needed a lot of work. It's no at day they eat, that's for sure. I don't know why that sentence confused me. The night may be over, but it's not the darkness we must fear. I'm more a fan of the mystic robots must sleep. That reminds me of the book. The title is, I think, Robots Dream of Electric Sheep. The night may be over, but it's not the darkness we must fear. It's the day, for the day is when... For the day is when is when the warm-blooded wake. The day is when they eat. I can't believe humans were the bad guys all along. It's really a powerful allegory for the environmental destruction caused by animal agriculture, right? Anyway, unfortunately, you're pretty late to the game now. Not many dogs left for adoption. But worry not, that just means you're fated to adopt one of the fuzzy little buddies waiting for you behind that door. Let's just get the, these details sorted out. Okay, name? Melissa Allen. Well, it's wonderful to meet you, Melissa Allen. I'll get you to fill out all these other boring bits with the old pen and paper. There we go. Quincy swivels around in his wheelie chair as a form edges its way out of a nearby printer, before sliding said form and a ballpoint pen across the desk towards me. It's all the usual stuff. Address, phone, age, living situation, where your dog will sleep. Hmm, wait a minute. Hey, uh, why do you need to know where the dog will sleep? <laughs> oh, that? Yeah, that's so we can kidnap the dog after you pay the adoption fee and just kind of recycle them. Oh, sure, of course. Right, right, right. Cool, 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 cool. So... <laughs> I nearly had you there, right? No, it's just so we can get an idea of the kind of lives the sweet little pups are going to be living after they leave our care. Plus, it helps us understand how they're living if they have any issues in later checkups. Pretty straightforward. There are a few more questions along those lines. I see. Well, I think I'm done filling this all out then. Quincy rubs his hands together excitedly as I slide the form back across the desk. Hmm. Alrighty, let's see what you're working with. Hmm, renting, small apartment, never owned a dog before, huh? Is that going to be an issue? Nah, no, probably not. Dr. Kim can run through all that with you. She should be ready for you now, so why don't you just take this here form back and let her have it? The form, I mean. I wouldn't cross Dr. Kim if I were you. With one last wink, Quincy does a full 360 spin in his chair, then dramatically points me towards the far door, finger guns and all. Thanks for your help. No problem, Melissa Allen. Okay, time to meet some dogs. We're gonna pick a dog, guys. I think, I hope, maybe. Melissa? Um, yes, ma'am? Take a seat, I'll just be a minute. Dr. Kim barely looked up when I entered. She's sitting at a computer in the far corner, intermittently tapping away at the keyboard before sighing and rustling some papers on the desk. All the jobs, the jobs, the joys of data entry. I have a quick scan of the room, but the only seat seems to be the one she's sitting on. Unless... There's the examination table. Does she want me to sit there? Like... like a dog? No, surely not. There must be another option. Quick! Pose naturally on the table. There's only one chair, only one can sit. Uh, let's just pose naturally. And let... because... It makes it sound like she's gonna, like... Push Dr. Kim off the chair, but also, like, just stand and be like a normal person. I have to act quickly. It's clear this is the only other seat, and I mean, she's a vet, so she's used to her patients sitting on the table, right? I can't be caught looking around the room like I don't belong here. I need to seem like a respectable, fast-thinking dog owner. Okay, I might have gotten this wrong. I just thought she was gonna, like, lean on the table. 
I didn't realize she was gonna jump and sit on the table. That's confusing, but it also shows a lack of boundaries. Let's keep going. And so I begin my ascent. The right leg first, it feels more natural. I'll just hoist it up and over. Oh heck, I haven't stretched in months. I'm in the middle of the examination room. One leg swung atop the table. I can feel every tendon in my legs and groin screaming. The heat from my leg muscles emanates up to my face until I'm sure my skin could provide a sustainable energy source for a whole new planet. My eyes start to water desperately as I do everything in my power not to squeak and or cry hopelessly. Why? Why didn't I stretch first? What hope is left for me now? Why? Excuse me? Oh. Oh. Sorry, I'm just going to bring out the dog while you figure out your situation. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Dr. Ken rolls her eyes slightly as she turns away and leaves into another room seemingly full of kennels. There's only one way to undo this hell I've cast upon myself. I let my body go limp and slump to the floor gracelessly. I consider just letting myself lie there for a moment, but I don't know when she'll be back. Reluctantly, I find my feet again and await her return, standing to attention as if to make up for what I just forced the good doctor to witness. And like clockwork, she returns. We have four dogs for you to choose from. Take a look at their kennel cards and see who you'd like to take home. I promise they're all wonderful dogs who will make you very happy. Are you ready? Yes, please. All right now, take your pick and please excuse their names. That's all, Quincy. Feel free to change them. Oh, Titan, that's cute. Okay, so Titan is a Maltese, four years old. Uh, female, level one everything, but I'm sure that's probably just what they're all gonna be. Oh, hello, my name's Titan and I'm excited to meet you. Even if I seem shy, you can tell I'm happy by looking at my busy little tail. I'm a four-year-old Maltese Terrier. I was found in a big storm one day a long time ago, which might be why I've had a lot of trouble with my heart. I've been through quite a few operations. Ever since then, I've been to lots of lovely families who agreed to look after me while I got better. Now I'm looking for someone permanent. I'm sort of scared of new people, but once I get used to someone, I'll give them all the attention in the world. I love to sit on warm laps when I'm not curled up on my favorite blanket. I like short walks and rolling around on the floor. Sometimes I get a little too excited and make a mess, but it's only because I have lots of love to give even though I'm very tiny. All right, uh, he was a stray. Not bad. Uh, I'm not- he's a small dog, which is fine. I prefer bigger dogs, though. Uh, and he has a lot of health problems, which is also fine. It's, uh, it's just gonna be a lot. I don't know what my job is. It might be a lot of money, but we'll see. All right, Blocker. He's one years old. Uh, he is a mutt. Confiscate. Oh, feels bad. I think that means they took him from someone because he was- because they weren't taking care of him. Hi, I'm Blocker. Behind my intense face, I'm actually a big softy who just wants to play all day long. I'm a mutt, which really means I'm a mix of a lot of different breeds of dog. All the best bit- all the best bits. My previous owners didn't treat me very well and some nice folks had to take me away. They cleaned me up, gave me lots of cuddles and pats, and they're helping me look for a new home. Since I didn't get the best start in life, I can be a bit stubborn, and loud noises or shouting can frighten me. Treat me with love and care, though, and I'll be loyal forever. I love to run around, and I'm pretty strong, so be careful to keep a tight hold on my leash when you take me for walks. I'm always eager to play fetch or, exp or explore, since I didn't get outside much as a puppy. I might get a little too friendly or act a bit scared sometimes, but a kind family can find a very good friend to me. So, I said small dogs are fine, but it does occur to me that since we live in an apartment, a small dog might be the better option. Big dogs need a lot of room. Alright, cheese dog. Uh, surrendered. Cheese ball, rather. I think this is the one they said was bad. Uh, nine months old, so a puppy. Shiba Inu, female. Uh, Shibu, Sh Shiba Inus, I think, are like a medium-sized dog. I don't know off the top of my head. A mutt could be anything, but he's probably also medium sized. I feel like most mutts are medium sized, if that makes sense. Uh, but a cheese ball. Hello, I'm Cheese Ball. Just because I sound delicious doesn't mean you should eat me, though. I'm a Shiba Inu and I'm only nine months young. That means I can be a bit of a handful and could still make and could still use some socialization. The most important thing you should know about me is that I'm a free thinker. I might do what you say, but only because I want to. 
I'm a proud Chanteuse, but my neighbors don't seem to like my Shiba scream very much. I don't know why. I'm beautiful and I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful and I'm beautiful. If you're going to adopt me, you need to be prepared to not let me manipulate you into getting what I want. And I can be very convincing. So, she is a handful, but she's also young, and I feel like younger dogs are, get adopted more, so... We'll have to think about that. Someone else will probably love Cheese Ball and might have more time. I don't know what my job is. Um... Cardigan, two years old. Uh, Staffordshire Terrier. It, he looks like a medium-sized dog, but it's hard to tell in the pictures. Uh... Let's see. Greetings, potential family. My name is Cardigan, but you can call me Cardi for short. I'm a Stafford Staffordshire Bull Terrier. I'm about three years old, but it's hard to tell exactly what my birthday might be. I was found wandering the streets and in a bit of a rotten state. Despite graduating from school from the school of hard knocks, I love people, especially the little ones. Please be careful with me around other dogs, though as they scare me sometimes. Even though my hips get a little sore, sometimes I love to get lots of exercise. I'm happy with the high-speed chase through the trees or a sedate amble to the local shops. Having something ready for me to chew on after you adopt me. Or you might just lose your favorite pair of shoes. Give me boundaries and I'll love you forever. Do you like boundaries? I think I'm between... I mean, they're all good dogs. They're good dogs, Brent. Let's go, let's go with Blocker. I want to give him a good life after his hard life. Adopting a dog is a serious decision, so you make sure you've thought through your choice. What's this? Blocker is your new best friend! Hmm, it looks like they need some reassurance. Give them some pats. Great job! They seem to really like you. Do you want to keep the name Blocker or rename him? Uh, let's just keep it. We don't want to confuse him. Now there is an excited dog. Oh, I can pet him. Oh, you guys can't see him. <gasps> hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, me me and this dog are going to make friends. Hang on. Oh, God. Okay. Well, Blocker does a lot of things. Good boy. All right. You seem like a good match. I think he likes you. Now, your form says you're a first timer. We don't want to let that stop you, but it's important to us that any dog who leaves Paw Prince is loved and looked after properly. So it's going to be it's going to be a condition of adoption that both yourself and Blocker pass Paul's Academy or dog training program. We'll provide some basic tools to help you bond with and train Blocker, but it's up to you to keep him happy, healthy, and trusting. Every 5 weeks we'll check in with your class to see how you're doing, like a class review. Every 5 weeks, how long is this class? Holy crap, I got work. I got places to be. It's probably one class a week, right? Oh god, Blocker is getting away from you! Click and drag them back! Oh no! You managed to wrangle Blocker back under control. Jesus Christ. Alright, well, apparently this is a thing we're doing now. After 15 weeks, we'll be having final examinations to see if you and Blocker are going to be right for each other. 15 weeks, huh? That sounds doable. I'm sure we're gonna get along just great. I doubt it. I don't doubt it. Oh god. I was about to be like, wow, this vet is terrible. I just don't know how to read. Blocker looks jade. Just see Quincy on your way out. Let him know you're joining Paws Academy. It's like school, but for dogs. He'll set you up with all you need for Blocker. All right, thanks, Dr. Kim. Ah, see you next please. Time. Jade is fine. The crowd almost com has almost completely cleared out. It's actually pretty peaceful in here now. There's just the soft white noise of people talking amongst themselves as they wait for their appointments and a few dogs scrambling around off leash. Quincy seems busy talking to a woman with thick, unruly auburn hair. She's leaning against the desk with one arm and I can see there's a leash in her hand. On the other end of that leash, a well-groomed dog, slightly longer than it is tall. Its long coat is shiny and mottled with silver, black, tan, and white. Oh god, there, there he is. Hell yeah, look at- now, if I just sit like this for the rest of the day, um, you could just look at all the dogs. The dog, an Australian Shepherd, I think, is clearly calmly, nope, is sitting calmly and patiently, not minding the business of any of the pups around the clinic. Oh no. Blocker! 
Before I even begin trying to get Blocker to behave, I'm being pulled toward the reception desk. Blocker, no! Arf? Oh, I didn't comfort him. I'm sad. Arf? Blocker shoves his snout right up to the Aussie and continues barking, but the other dog seems more or less unfazed. Looks like we got a newbie here, Quincy. <laughs> Someone's a bit excited, I say. I'm so sorry. Oh my dog, Blocker, stop! The Aussie looks at Blocker with its mouth open, tongue hanging out happily. If anything, it seems happy to see your dog. And yet Blocker keeps going. Here, let me help. Slacken his lead a, li a little. Oh, uh... Phew! I put a little more give into the leash and immediately Blocker, Blocker stops barking, instead pacing freely around the Aussie and sniffing. A lot of the time, aggression is just barrier frustration. You need to let him explore a little at his own pace. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that. Uh, although I've heard it called... Fence Envy, I think? Fence Envy? Try not to let her make a habit of getting into other people's spaces like that, though. It helps to reward her as soon as she sees another dog. Let her know that other dogs bring good things like treats. Ooh, very good, Robin. Spoken like a true Paws Academy alumnus. I still remember a thing or two from the good old days, back before Missile here started taking care of himself. Arf? Hey. Good day, Missile. How are you? Crikey, she's a talkative one today. Shall we get you checked into daycare, then throw another shrimp on the Barbie, Missy? Here we go. What's with the accent, Quincy? Miss Al's an Australian shepherd. <laughs> Just trying to help her feel more at home. She's never really been to Australia. It's ancestral. I honestly don't think Australian Shepherds are even originally from Australia. <gasps> don't be a drongo, Robin. I'm putting in the hard yaka to make sure the Sheila doesn't feel like she's lost out whoop whoop. What? Who? Hmm. Yeah, no wuckas. She'll be stoked to have a true blood Aussie combo. <laughs> I don't know if I can't. I meant to ask about Paul's Academy. Oh. Oh yeah, that's right. It's kind of like school, but for dogs. Mm. Miss All here was a valedictorian, graduated top of the class of 2016. Just like that, true excellence, shiny coat, perfect manners, doesn't react to aggression. <laughs> oh stop, it's nothing. I don't know how she does it. What? Yes you do. It's a mystery. I remember when I used to it's the result of a lot of patience, hard work, and love. And free time, from back when I used to have even a little bit of that. Let's have a look. Anyway, I can enroll... What's this little one's name now? Blocker. Oh, and I'm Melissa. Nice to meet you, Robin. That's right. Robin Savage. Maybe I'll see you around town. Or if you ever need a foreign object removed from your body. Robin stands up straight and rolls her shoulders back before turning to Quincy briefly. I actually need to head off to my shift. Is Miss Isle all checked in? Sure is. Have a good day saving lives, Nurse Savage. More like hurting cats. See you next time, Quincy. And good to meet you, Melissa. Robin marches away, walking just a little too quickly to seem natural. Oh, she's gone. Okay, I can sit up now. She seems... nice. Hmm. She's a good one, Robin. Never as calm as she lets on, though. It's hard to know what's happening under all those fiery, fiery locks. Now then, Paul's Academy, it's like... Like school, but for dogs. Got it. <laughs> yeah, heard that one before? It's pretty hands-off. We'll provide you with the basics you need to continue training your pup, and we'll ch check in every now and then to see how you're going. We put a big focus on making it about you and your dog, building a relationship that's based on trust and respect, and picking up poop. Oh boy. Someone's gotta do it. Quincy reaches under the desk and pulls out a brown paper bag which he plops right in front of me. In here, you've got a set of toys, treats, and tricks to get your training underway. This won't last the whole program, but that's fine. You'll be able to discover more as you train your dog and form relationships across the city. Make sure to have at least one good, long quality time session with Blocker every week and put those tools to the test, okay? Got it. Thanks, Quincy. Hmm. Hey, no problem. If you have any questions, feel free to call us anytime and don't be a stranger. Nothing makes me happier than seeing how our adoption dogs are thriving with their new owners. <laughs> you take good care of Blocker now. I'll be trying my best. We've got a lot of work to do together, he and I. See you next time, Melissa Allen. With my Paul's Academy starter kit in one hand and Blocker's leash in the other, I spin around and put one foot ahead of the other, onward and up and outward. 
Oops. Blocker trots just ahead of me, sniffing around excitedly and wiggling his little tail until something catches his nose and he tugs me forward. Pulled by the whim of the rambunctious blocker, I fall headlong into a stranger on his way into the clinic, sitting papers flying into the air like a burst of feather pillow. Oh my. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's quite all right. I just need those papers. Of course, let me help, please. I crouch down, releasing the starter kit and begin collecting papers from the sidewalk. They're legal documents, judging from the numbered sections and sticky notes indicating initial here. As I stretch toward another sheet just out of reach, it's snatched away by a blonde muzzle. I'm face to face with the bright-eyed golden Labrador, holding the last sheet of paper softly in his mouth. He nudges me, he nudges toward me slightly, offering the document. So cute. Thank you. Oh, thanks. I'm sure you're not bad looking yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, I was talking about the dog. I know, just wishful thinking on my part. I take a paper from the dog's mouth, extending my other hand to pat his head, but he hastily pulls away. Ah, oh, please don't pat him while he's working. Working? Hemingway is my guide dog. He's a good boy, but he needs to focus on what he's doing. Oh, I'm really bad at that for some reason. Oh gosh, you're blind, yes. For the most part, anyway. Don't let that put you off, though. Love is blind, too, you know. God, he is coming on strong. I can feel the color intensifying in my cheeks. Whether he's serious or not, this man doesn't mince words. I'm Andres Hamilton, family lawyer. Andres extends a hand and I shake it in turn. It's warm but not clammy, almost the perfect temperature. His hand is a fair bit bigger than mine, with more strength in his grip. I can feel a callus running along the base of his index finger. The corners of his eyes pinch up as he smiles, betraying some age. Nonetheless, his plaited hair is a deep raven tone and occasionally wafts the scent of sandalwood when he tilts his head. <laughs> My handshakes don't usually last this long. Oh! I let go of his hand quickly. Oh, God. And stoop slightly to pick- oh, to pick up the rest of the papers. I didn't say I minded. You have very soft hands. Thanks. I think you have a callus. <laughs> Was that supposed to be a compliment? But you're right, it's from a chef's knife. I take classes. I'd love to see what you can do with those hands. I'm going for it. Fuck it. My specialty is Eggs Benedict. Perhaps I'll make it for you if you're ever around in the morning. I'm more of a sweet breakfast person. Can you do waffles with extra whipped cream? <sighs> waffles are a little basic, aren't they? Wait, what? It's just, there's a lot more that goes into Eggs Benedict. It's a more nuanced dish, both in terms of technique and on the palate. We're actually talking about food, aren't we? I take my cooking very seriously. Anyway, I was actually just on my way to a meeting. Thanks for your help getting these papers together. No problem. I think I put them back in the right order. If not, you'll be hearing from my lawyers. <laughs> I mean me. I'm my own lawyer. Here, let me give you my business card. Anders quickly slips a card from his coat pocket. It's a sophisticated off-white stock with- Oh. With embossed foil print reading Hamilton, Hamilton, and Hamphrey on the front. His details are on the back. Who's the other Hamilton? Hmm? Oh, that's Hemingway. He's my partner. I don't get the impression he's in the... I don't get the impression he's joking. I'll leave you to it. Hold on. You haven't told me your name. It's Melissa, fledgling photographer, and my dog is Blocker. You've got my number. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure, Melissa. Yup, see you around. Blocker excitedly squirms as we take to the streets of Rainbow Bay. This is the beginning for the dastardly duo of Melissa and Blocker, our first time terrorizing the streets. It's a pretty nice day for terror, too. I think we'll walk home. I fall through the front doorway of my apartment without grace. The vet's clinic seemed a lot closer by car. It took over two hours to walk home. That's it. From now on, I'm a rubering everywhere. At least one of us still has energy. Maybe you can whip us up some lunch for us then, Blocker. Is that a yes? Please? Okay, okay. I guess I should show you around the place. Come here. Let me take off your leash. Blocker waddles over to my feet and politely sits, waiting as I unclasp the leash. Ah. Blocker forcefully licks my face, toppling me over in the process. Whoa, someone's excited. No, my face isn't food. Blocker, stop! You must be pretty hungry after all that pooping on the way home. I'm gonna whip us up some food. Why don't you go and check out your new digs? 
I climb up from the floor, from the floor, hoisting myself up on still packed boxes. Despite my plan, Blocker is hot on my heels, weaving between my footsteps as I move into the kitchen with the puppy starter set. Hesitantly, I place the starter set bag on the kitchen counter, dig around a bit and pull out a large can of wet food. The smell of food hits me like a freight train as I open the can, and it's only a moment before Blocker gets a whiff too. How much am I supposed to give you? I guess the whole can? The whole can, sure. I empty the can into the metal bowl provided in the starter set and set the overflowing bowl down at the end of the kitchen counter. I kind of just want to watch him eat. I give up on watching Bro Blocker eat. He just keeps going, like his stomach is a black hole, sucking in everything that gets close enough. All he needs is super inhalation powers and he'll be like, you know, that little pink demon. I think I'm going to lie down for a second. Wow, what did they do to this floor to make it so comfortable? I submit to the yawns that befall me, my eyes blaring up so I can hardly see what's happening as he moves away from his bowl and starts circling by the floor. That's strange. What is he doing? Oh no! I sit down on the floor again following the cleanup from my rude awakening. I had to throw open every window in the apartment and even deck up a few scented candles from my boxes. Doesn't seem like Blocker thinks he's done anything wrong. I guess he just needed to poop. Can't help that. Even I poop sometimes. I think potty training will be your top priority, though. I'll get you a toilet pad for the balcony, too. How about a training session now? I need to figure out how this Paul's Academy thing works. Alright, let's see. Oh god. Scheduling for week one. Blocker's traits. Okay, so he has pretty good manners now that I've been working with him. Uh, sociability, trust. His trust isn't that great. Smarts and fitness. So, oh wow, there's a lot. Pick five activities? Jeez, okay. All right, let's go. Run week. Uh, activity result. Blocker got into a friendly barking match with the local Frenchie on the way home. Manners increase, fitness increase. Nice. Employee a dog. Blocker worked that reflector like an absolute champ and only chewed it a little bit. Sociability increase in trust in police. Great. Uh, dog park party. Within five minutes, Blocker was in a butt sniffing circle. They smelled some new friends. Increased in sociability and manners. Puddle paddle. Blocker convinced a local surfer to let him hang tin. Cowabunga. Trust increase and fitness increased. Sit and stay. Blocker's play dead was a little too convincing. You might have a budding film star on your hands. Nice. So that's not too bad. All right, blockers feels. Uh, so let's see. He's kind of nourished, hydrated, mood, energy. Uh, let's go ahead and we can give him wet food to shake out enough food. Then hold the. Okay. Cute. Uh, let's go ahead and shampoo him. Alright. Hell yeah. Alright. Oh, he's... I guess I gotta hose him down now. Nice, okay. Oh, oh, I think that went pretty well. Good job, Blocker. He's wet. Blocker curls up on the floor. Looks like I finally wore him out for the day. It's been a pretty big day, hasn't it, Blocker? I met a lot of people, though. Maybe I should invite everyone over for a housewarming party. You're right. I definitely need to unpack first. Maybe I'll wait a couple weeks. That gives me time to make even more friends. How about for now we head to bed? There's all sorts of havoc we can wreck tomorrow. Snoozing in progress. Hell yeah. Alright, so it's been a week. We're gonna have to go check in with the vet, I guess. Oh no, five weeks, right? I forgot that this thing is forever. No! Why does morning have to occur every day? What cruel god would let this happen? I flop my arm out from the covers and hastily slam the snooze button on my phone. Ah, sweet peace. I could lie like this forever. 
No! Blocker, why have you forsaken me? Fine, I'll get up. All right, I guess we're getting up. All right, I'm up. You got your food. Are you happy now? Block Blocker totters away from his empty food bowl and begins circling by the door again. Oh, no, you don't, Poopington the third. Walkies, time for walkies. Works every time. All right, we're going walkie. Pet, but Blocker's not even here. Melissa, puppy love is just around the corner. Hi, Melissa. Welcome to Woofer. We've matched you with lots of hot singles around Rainbow Bay, and they can't wait to meet you. You might even run into some of these eligible hotties while you're out exploring the city. Anyone who's happy to hear from you will be visible on your map, so swing by and introduce yourself when you have the chance. The Woofer team. Attachment suspiciousfile.exe Oof. We won't click on that. Wow, they fully disclosed their location before we've even met? That doesn't seem safe. But on the other hand, my whole journey up to this point has been suspiciously serendipitous, and who am I to question fate? Don't try this at home, kids. Let's go meet some strangers from the internet. So let's see, your new apartment. Welcome to Rainbow Bay. This is a cur courtesy email to inform you your apartment is ready to move in. Your luggage has arrived and is waiting at your new home. Yeah, we've already figured all that out. Body corporate bylaws. Oh, I, I can't actually click on it. That's fine. Uh, dog adoption fair, yeah. Okay. Encounter. Oops, we do want to meet Astrid, so let's go meet an Astrid. Arts District Market. Kish Farmers Market in the Arts District Square every day from 7 to 14. Cool. Oh, wow! Rainbow Bay has a crafts market! I can't wait to see this. I step from the street into a broad cobbled square with a large monolith in the center. Scattered around the square are all manner of independent stalls. From gourmet hot dogs to scented candles, just about every niche of handcrafted goods seems to be on offer. Wow, all this is just a few blocks from my apartment. What space is left between stalls seems to be largely filled out by people slowly drifting around the square. Everyone seems content- Oh. Everyone seems content to take their time, while shopkeepers seem happy to have lengthy conversations about their products. Last call for gourmet bully sticks. Only one left until we can make more next week. If your dog likes to chew, then you should choose this treat. Chew treats, huh? How does that sound, Blocker? Alright, let's go get you your first bully stick. Kind of a weird name for a treat, though. I wonder where it comes from. Why, hello there, youngin. Care to treat your little pupper there to a gourmet bully stick? These are 100% organic, handcrafted, bespoke, non-GMO, gluten-free, ketotonic, meaty chews for just your special little friend. Oh wow, that sounds great! What exactly is a bully stick? Uh, you know, it's stick of a particular cut of meat. What, like steak? Not quite. You're better off not knowing. Ah! Who are you? A comically short woman with a high ponytail and slightly upturned nose stands behind me. Sitting patiently by her side is an exquisitely groomed dog with impossibly thick white fur. It holds its mouth closed over a handle of paper over the handle of a paper bag emblazoned with a logo reading Arts and Witchcraft. Just one of the many people in the crowd overhearing your conversation. And the owner of a very too happy Samoyed, who would love a fresh bully stick, <laughs> if you don't mind. Uh, actually I wanted one for my dog. For who? Seriously? I can't get you to change your mind, can I? Lake has been working really hard late lately and it would mean a lot if I could get her this chew. Um, I was here first. The short woman huffs, frowning and looking off to the side as if she's thinking of a response. She spends a long, uncomfortable minute pouting before letting a resigned sigh pass her highly glossed lips. You're right. Go ahead. It's all yours. Come on, Leika. Maybe we can score you some gourmet peanut butter. Thank- Before I can properly thank her, the petite woman marches away. Her posture portrays both grace and physique as I watch her leave. Okay, I thought I was gonna like her, but I don't. I've already decided I hate her. Ah, sorry about that. That's okay. Astrid's one of our best customers, but she can be a little uptight sometimes. You were here first, so this bully stick is rightfully yours. Thanks for the validation. And the bully stick. Of course. You still have to pay for it, though. Oh, right. I pay for the bully stick and quickly shuffle out of the market's crowded... Crowd crush. What? All right. You want your treat now? Here you go, blocker. As soon as the treat is in Blocker's mouth, he turns away and starts pulling on his leash. 
Whoa, where are we going, Blocker? Blocker leads me across to the other side of the market, where the same short woman from before is sitting on a bench and sipping a fresh pressed juice from a nearby stall. The Samoyed, who's since put the paper bag down, sees Blocker coming from a distance and stands up eagerly. She doesn't leave the woman's side, but lets out a short ex excited bark to welcome us. With Astrid watching curiously, Blocker prances up to the Samoyed and drops the bully stick at her feet. What? Blocker, that was for you. You really want to share it? Oh, well, we've obviously met a lot of dogs being in Rainbow Bay, but I think this is the first for us. I guess Blocker and Leica might be like friends. Might like to be friends. Um, yeah. <laughs> Look, I think you and I got off on My the wrong Astrid foot. Brooks. Figure, Figure skater. skater. Oh. Astrid extends a hand, which I cautiously take. Her grip is surprisingly firm and her shake, her shake firmer yet. I'm Melissa. I just moved here. I'm uh, a photographer, sort oh. of. Sort of? What does that mean? Well, I'm just sort of a hobbyist right now. I'll hopefully pick up some gigs, but I only just moved here. You need more conviction. You are a photographer. You will be picking up gigs. I like your optimism. It's not optimism. It's determination. Everything in life is just what you put into it, you know? Anyway, you should come and see Lake and I practice sometime. We're at the skating rink most days. Wow, there's a skating rink in Rainbow Bay? Sure is. It's an Olympic level rink too. There's a gym there and everything. <laughs> I have to go and get ready for practice now, actually. Bye and thanks again for the bully stick. And really, don't look up what it's made of. That only makes me want to look it up more. I've gotta go. See you around, Astrid. She's a little odd, but I think I like her. Mm, I'll think about it. I might have a look around the market before I move on. Come on, Blocker. Let's go see Maribel. Industrial District, best flat white in Rainbow Bay, serving the Industrial District. Known for hot baristas, nut milks, and free grounds. It says she's at a local cafe. Let's go get you a puppuccino, Blocker. It took a little while, but I eventually found the cafe. The shop front is modest, barely distinguishable from the surrounding units, and only a small sign declares the place to be named Cool Story Brew. I hate that. The queue almost reaches around the block. A mix of people fill the sidewalk, from bearded and bespectacled hipsters to well-dressed professionals exuding impatience. There's a few tables dotted around the pavement, though most are taken up by people sporting a sideways sit as if they were, as if they were royalty riding into the village on their white steed. Are more likely awaiting a takeaway order. Just as I take another step towards the opening of the door, a piercing sound splits through the air. I can hardly tell where it's coming from, or what it is. It sounds like a squeaky toy? Or five squeaky toys. Five very loud squeaky toys. Blocker isn't too pleased about the noise. Gravy? Here, Gravy, good girl. The buff woman, having stepped away from the counter, quickly hops toward the curb and bends over. She scoops up an immaculate an immaculately groomed Pomeranian, kisses her on the forehead, and pops her into her backpack. Huh, I guess I just didn't see the dog amongst all the hustle and bustle. That, and it's tiny. Yep! Hey there, I see you met Gravy. Sorry about the barking. She's just a little shy. Uh, doesn't she get it hot in there? <laughs> nope, check it out. This is the Pup Pack 3000 with reinforced acrylic dog vision viewing station, 47 unique ventilation points, and built-in organic pheromone diffuser. The bad boy- this bad boy is the latest and greatest in pup accessories and is the perfect mobile home for the bestest of girls. Yes, that's you, Gravy. Yes, it is. I'm sorry, her name is Gravy? Oh, yeah, but that's just a nickname. It's short for Grave Digger. Oh my god. <laughs> grave Digger? Of course. Doesn't she look like a Grave Digger to you? Gravy yips in agreement, then smiles broadly, her small tongue out and proud. What about this little doggo? The woman squats down impressively fast and holds out a hand to Blocker. Blocker licks her hand and bows their head for maximum <gasps> pets. <gasps> what a cutie! This is Blocker. I just got him recently. <clears throat> well, it's very lovely to meet you, Blocker. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You must be new in town if you're a recent adopter. What brought you out to Rainbow Bay? Oh, you know, life. Nothing to do with mystical dog wizard or anything. Dog wizard? Nope, nothing. <laughs> Aw, oh, I was so intrigued. Anyway, I should really get going. I have to get Gravy to daycare before my next meeting. See you around sometime? Before I could respond, the woman power walks away with Gravy yipping a friendly goodbye from her pup palace. 
Gravy looks pretty co comfy up there, doesn't she, Blocker? Barely 30 seconds pass before I see the same woman veering around the corner and power walking towards me again. I've seen you before. What? I just remembered. On Woofer, right? We got matched. Oh, yeah. I didn't think you recognized me. Hey, I'm Maribel, Let me introduce myself properly. And Pomeranian lover. Hmm. She extends a hand to shake. It's distressingly sweaty. I guess she broke a sweat sprinting back here. <laughs> Well, it was lovely to meet you. We should meet again. Get to know each other a little better. I swear I'm not always in this much of a rush. Let's exchange Gotta emails. Keep moving. Of course, I'll be in touch. Maribel jogs away once more, leaving me with her email address scribbled on the back of a piece of paper. I think so far I like Maribel the best. Sasha was okay, but his laugh is weird. It looks like a receipt for one protein bar for $10. She seems like a whirlwind of fun, huh, Blocker? I crouch down to pet Blocker, suddenly widening my sweat-covered palms onto his fur. Well, I guess we should get moving. I guess we'll go see Felix. I'm not really interested in Felix. But we'll go see him anyway. Rainbow Bay Library. Council-owned city library, famously uncensored. Two of five stars, known for authoritarian, librarian, and dog-friendly. The Rainbow Bay Library, huh? I guess this guy must read a lot. So here it is, the imaginatively named Rainbow Bay Library. I guess we should be quiet. It's kind of surprising that dogs are allowed in here, even for Rainbow Bay. I mean, it's a library. What if a dog started... Oh no. Huh. No one seemed to notice. I guess everyone in this town is just used to hearing dogs all the time. Relieved to avoid making a scene, I wait a moment before rewarding Blocker's silence with a treat. Good boy, Blocker. Hey, this is a library. Keep quiet. Wait, what? A library? You know, books? People come here to read or just get some peace and quiet. It's not really a place to have a conversation with your dog. I look the abrupt young man up and down. I recognize him from Woofer. I think his name is Felix. His hair is styled back, but not so much to seem pristinely groomed. It's more like he deliberately tried to make it look effortless. His tight black shirt portrays a well-sculpted torso, large pectorals further framed by straps of brown leather which wrap around to his back. Below his armpit is a holster fortunately devoid of firearms. An identification tag hangs from his belt, but it's a little too far for me to read. All I did was praise him. So, do it quietly. Sorry, officer, I don't want any trouble. Officer, are you not a cop? I work here. You're a librarian? Oh, so why the holsters? <laughs> One is for my phone, and the other is for treats. Treats? For yourself? No, they're for Mulder. He's around here somewhere. Felix turns around, puts the tip of his thumb and forefinger in his mouth, and gives a single sharp whistle. Hey, what happened to being quiet? Well, uh, I'm the librarian, so I get to make exceptions. Before I could complain, a large, albeit little, German Shepherd comes bounding out from between some of the bookshelves and stops immediately by Felix's side. Mulder. Good boy, Good Mulder. Boy. True to his explanation, Felix puts a small pulls a small treat from his left holster and feeds it to Mulder. Aw, oh, he's so well behaved. He's still pretty young. We're doing Paul's Academy right now, so there's a lot of training on the go. Hey, S2. This is Blocker, by the way. Blocker sniffs the ground and turns away from Mulder. Looks like he doesn't want to say hi. Hmm. Probably for the best. This isn't the ideal environment to be introducing two untrained dogs. Blocker shuffles behind my legs and stares at the door. You're probably right. Maybe we could hang out sometime and give them the chance to become friends. Uh, yeah, that could be good. <laughs> I mean, if you want it, I guess. I could show you around the gym sometime. Maybe. <laughs> well, I'll have to buy some activewear. I haven't really been to the gym since long before I moved here. I could help you with that if you like. I get a few perks around the local sports stores. Oh, thanks. I'll probably have to try stuff on, though. That's okay. It's easier when you have someone who knows what to look for. If it makes you feel more comfortable, I'll wear my running tights. <laughs> no, that's fine. Hmm. All right, I guess. All right, well, I should get back to work. These books won't put themselves on shelves. Too true. It was nice to meet you, Melissa. Huh. I never told you my name. Oh, yeah. 
But I recognize you from Woofer, so I guess you know how to contact we'll see me. You around. Anyway, bye. Before I can say anything further, Felix ducks into the office behind the front desk with Mulder in tow. The door swings the door swings comically behind him. I can't tell if that went well. Well, I'm definitely not here for books. I mean, who reads? Whoa, calm down, girl. Guess it's time to move on. Phew, it's been a busy day. We've been all over the city, but there's still so much left to explore. For now, I think it's time to rest our weary feet. And pause. Bakker drags his feet a little as we make our way through the streets of the Arts District. Looks like someone will be ready for naps when we get home. Looking around, the Arts District seems like it's starting to wind down for the day. A few cafes are closing up and there's all, there's all around less hustle and bustle. The sun casts long shadows, painting the street with stripes of dark brown and gold. Still, some of the residents of Rainbow Bay are lounging outside bars, basking in the late afternoon sun with their dogs. Others are simply drifting through, transient, but in no hurry at all. As I wander along, I feel a sharp tug at the end of Blocker's leash. Huh? I whip my head around to see Blocker is rooted in place outside a shop front, staring in and, star and standing alert. What is it, Blocker? My eyes wander upwards to read a small, indistinct sign hanging in an otherwise blacked out window. Fox Fox's Tavern and Bar? You want to go in, Blocker? Blocker shuffles up to the door and paws gently at the glass. I guess that's a yes. I have no idea what I'm about to discover, but I have a feeling it's not going to be like anything from New York. As I pull the door open, light spills into an almost completely dark room, save for a low orange light filling the space. The shop rests in shadow. It's almost uncomfortably hot in here, too. I don't think there's a single open window in this place. Uh, I'm not sure they're open, Blocker. Despite my complaints, Blocker shuffles forward, sniffing the ground like a bloodhound on the hunt. I follow Blocker through the shop, which is clearly neither a tavern nor a bar. We wander through aisles of glass enclosures, housing all manner of curious creatures. I recognize a few of them. Chinchillas, tree frogs, hedgehogs. Beyond that, there's an assortment of hamsters, fish, lizards, and... Ah! A snake! Oh geez, it's okay, Blocker. It's behind glass. Man, what is this place? Welcome. Welcome to my humble abode. Why is everything in this shop trying to give me a heart attack? Standing behind me is an impish woman, wrapped tightly in more layers than I can fathom. Amongst her ginger, ginger locks and the fur of her hood is sit two small birds, each the opposite of the other, one brightly colored and the other monotone. Calm now? Yes. <laughs> Great. Welcome to Fox's Tavern and Bar, a cornucopia of obscure pets and pet accessories. I'm Fox. Oh, this is a pet shop? I thought everyone adopted from the clinic here. That's right, I mostly sell exotic animals. So you don't sell dogs? No, you should adopt a dog, not buy one. Oh yeah, I'm not looking for one, I was just wondering. Blocker doesn't want a new friend? Hey, how did you- You said his name just a moment ago, Melissa. Oh, right. Wait. Anyway, I'm actually getting ready to close the shop for the day. Is there anything specific I can help you with? This is neither a tavern nor a bar. Uh -huh. And that's not a question. Touché, Fox. Touché. But to answer the question you didn't actually ask, it's a tavern and bar for animals. They come here and stay with me. I feed them, listen to their woes, tend to their aching hearts. Tell me how that doesn't sound like a tavern and our bar. Huh. Do you offer the same service to humans? No. Pity. Does anyone actually uh. buy exotic pets? What do you mean? I mean, this is the world's most dog-friendly city, right? Why would anyone here buy a chinchilla? Maybe they like chinchillas. I suppose. I also sell designer pet accessories. Oh, like leashes? Some leashes, yes. Can I see them? Hmm. Not yet. What does that mean? Why is it so dark in here? So they're awake in the daytime. Who? Them. Fox gestures to the glass enclosures around us. Everyone in this part of the room is nocturnal. Well, not everyone. You don't count. Oh. Ouch. Do you know there are birds on your shoulders? Do you think I wouldn't be aware of that? The colorful one is Melanie and the goth one is Phoebe. 
They're lovebirds. Oh, they're together? I mean, they're literally lovebirds. But also, yes, they're together. Cute! Wait a minute, have I seen you somewhere Ugh. before? Oh no, is this a pickup line? No, I swear there's just something so familiar about you. I don't recognize you, sorry. I feel like maybe I saw you online? It's a small city, you probably just saw me on the street. Wait, your voice. Oh no, you're that animal expert, Fox Ainsworth. You were on the radio when I was on the bus. Your parents are Steph and Terry Ainsworth, the zookeepers, <sighs> right? You caught me. Fox Ainsworth, Rainbow Bay's local wildlife expert and bird law prodigy. And yes, they are my parents. Next question. Oh, I don't think I actually have any more questions. <laughs> Great! Feel free to come by if you ever need something, but for now, I'd really like to go home. Ah, oh, right, sorry. I didn't mean to bother you. I just followed Blocker. Blocker must have some pretty good taste. Look after each other. I can tell he's a special one. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye now. But seriously, leave. Right. Home at last. Me too, Blocker. Me too. We've been so busy lately. I think we've both deserved an early night. There are some really cool people around here. What do you say we invite them all over once we've unpacked? Haha, <laughs> gross. Don't lick me. I'll take that as a yes, though. Let's give it a few weeks and then I'll send out some invitations. But first, we should probably do your training session, huh? Are you ready? There. Hopefully, that, a lot of that is trust, so hopefully that gets us somewhere. Big spoon, little spoon. Over the course of the nap, Blocker slowly pushed you out of the comfy spot on the couch. Blocker went to town on his puppuccino and quickly moved on to sniffing another dog's buttholes. Blocker didn't want you to remove his jacket after that very first, after the first, very first outfit. That was a short one way. Runway. Blocker was just listening to pop music and the camera went off. Not a model. They got over 100 likes in 15 minutes. Blocker convinced a local surfer to let him hang 10. Hell yeah. Alright, so we're gonna feed him. He's really hungry. So we'll go ahead and do wet food. Alright, good. Uh, it looks like he needs a treat. That would probably be pretty good for him. Uh, let's do this one. Chew bone. Alright. Excellent. Uh, is there anything I can do for... To get up his mood that's not giving him a treat? Ooh, sure. Oh man, now he's playing. Excellent. He needs to sleep, though. There we go. Snoozing in progress. Hell yeah. I think that means we should... Now that it's the start of week three, we'll probably go ahead and end this video here. So, uh, thanks to everyone who might have stopped by and watched this little experiment of a YouTube vi video. Um, I do hope that I'll stick with this soon. I really like this. It makes me feel like I can entertain without having to be in constant contact with people. Um, not that I don't love Twitch. I do I do love streaming on Twitch. Um, but after a long day of being at my full-time job, it's nice to be able to just sit back and play a game and not have to think too much about it. But I guess we'll see how the editing on the video goes. And hopefully this all turned out okay. Um, if you're seeing it, obviously it did. But uh, once again, thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out for however long you might have. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.